It is 5.30 in the morning and um, I thought I'd do a quick video update. Well, I always say they're gonna be quick, but I'll probably end up not being. But I realized I hadn't really done a vlog um, in quite a while, not since I got back from my trip uh, to visit my family. As you can see, Lauren is growing very, very fast. What? Seems like he grows every time you don't look at him. You growing fast? Yeah. And um, just to recap, he um, he ate a leash and he had to have emergency surgery to have it removed. And there was a lot of very bad complications and things that can happen with that, such as the intestines being twisted up and just all sorts of really nasty things. But thankfully it was caught in time and it was removed and it's like it didn't even happen. It was just wonderful. Well, not so much that he uh, ate the leash is wonderful, but it was the best case scenario out of a very, very lot of bad possibilities. Oh, look what you found. And he's doing great. Like I said, it's like it didn't even happen. And thank you again for everyone that's donated, especially recently. Um, a lot of people have been shocked when I tell them this, but uh, for those that have never had something unfortunate like your animal swallowing a leash before, the bill was actually $2,000. So I'm going to be paying that off for a really long time. So all the food and everything else has really um, helped me to get that paid. And the, the, the clinic deserves it too. I mean, they saved his life. And he's just such a happy, happy little guy. One of the questions I've been asked a lot recently is if Lauren gets along with the other animals, um, especially in regards to Chombi. And yeah, he gets along great with the other dogs. Uh, I think a lot of people wonder specifically Chombi because she is a livestock guardian dog meant to keep animals like Lauren away from the sheep and kind of not around her territory, but I think with proper introduction, she kind of gets it, yeah, that Lauren is part of the family and isn't a threat. But okay, let's go um, check out some of the other animals and I'll just um, show you how they've been doing during our fall slash summer monsoon season. Lauren! <laughs> Come on, Lauren. Come on, let's go see the sheep. Of course, as soon as I come over here, Octavian, blocks my view, but they're still waking up. There's Dasher right in the middle of the hay pile. Hi. And I have them in this smaller pen here. As you can see, it's a lot smaller. You can kind of see the back fence back there. And the reason I have them in here is to rotate them because this is our only rainy season, the only chance that I'm gonna get to grow out this big pasture and if I left them out there they would eat down all the little baby grasses and they wouldn't get a chance to grow. There's a little uh, American black belly and Octavian of Jackson. Jackson and the painted desert Painted desert. These guys are just babies. And the other painted desert, peeking in from back here, they've all been settling in well. Trivia, Livia, and their babies. And of course, Snow Cone and Flurry. Dasher. Oh, and my, um, my second ram, or third ram actually, but, um, my second ram that I intend to breed. I think his horn growth was a little stunted from where I got him from, but I think with better nutrition when he was younger, he would have a, a nicer set of growth. You're giving me the eye, Octavian. Hi. So everyone sh has basically shut it out. You can see on the, the other ram, there's Trivia telling Lauren to get out of here. And they're salt lick. 
don't really seem to mind being in here. It's obviously what you could call um, a dry lot, meaning there's not really anything for them to nibble on or graze on except for the hay. But this is best for um, long-term sustainability and hopefully can save me a little bit on my feed bill uh, when I release them to eat everything that's grown in the big pasture. But I just love the mouflon. Aren't they just beautiful? Here on the fence is where they help themselves rub out and shed out some of their uh, winter coat for the summer. And see Octavian keeps a really close watch on the girls. Uh, he is definitely very much the alpha male with uh, Jackson and the other ram kind of keeping their distance. And I'm saying the other ram and the painted desert and the black bellies because, yeah, I really haven't named any of them, which I really need to do. Feel free to suggest things. They're so colorful. They've got a lot of character and a lot of personality. There's Mama Trivia again, just ran after Lorne, which I'll put a link if you haven't seen my other video of her chasing him off. Okay, here's Octavian. He does this a lot. Just for an itch and I think to take out some uh, frustration. But they do, they have a lot of feeling in their horns. So when he itches there, he is actually feeling it. They seem so tired still. They're okay, let's say hi to Sniper, Kabul, and Fig who are just over here because they're next door neighbors. Sniper is basically at maturity. Um, she might get a little bit bigger, but um, this is about the extent of her. She might bulk up a little bit more. Uh, she is definitely a she, 100% for sure. Right, Sniper? Yeah. And if you've been watching a while, you know what happened with the, the friend that that we brought over to her and thank you for those donations and for those that donated I've almost got enough feathers um, to send you I think I'm missing maybe like three more I have to look so those are gonna go out in the next week or two and um, I still have that money saved away it looks like we're gonna have to wait till next season just because of the bad timing with Lauren's surgery taking up so much time because I was in the Midwest longer than I expected. I kind of missed the optimum time to get chicks. And it looks like we're going to have to get chicks because they just do not get acclimated to new environments very easily. So next season, I'll be getting a few more chicks. And uh, like I've mentioned so many times before, the survival rate on the chicks is usually very low. It is very, very, very unusual <laughs> that more and more and Sniper both made it <clears throat> made it to maturity with more and more only passing because of his genetic defect. Oh, did you hear that? I don't know if you heard that, but that was Kabul. Hold on, listen, maybe she'll do it again. Now that booming noise means that Kabul is a female, which I suspected that. Um, since she hatched, and you can see how much bluer. Is she gonna do it? No. We can see how much <clears throat> bluer her neck is. My throat is dry from talking so much. And <laughs> if she turn around, you can see how uh, much more of a mantle or the front part of her feathers are much thicker. And Fig is just sniper. Get away from my camera. Sniper just shot my camera. Okay, but you can see um, Fig is just smaller less blue and he's not making a booming noise so that makes him a male and sniper is a female i mean <laughs> kabul is a female get out of here you're distracting me sniper sniper's favorite thing is to snipe cameras I'm trying to give them a second more to see if oh did you hear that that was from deep in Kabul's throat, that noise, as it's the coolest thing. The dogs are on alert. You can hear far off in the background, I can hear um, someone's dogs way, way out there. 
Whatever it is, is not something I can see. We can go to check it out. I ran around the front, but not sure what it is. Good girl, Chambi. Sorry I'm a little shaky this morning. I, with everything that's happened, I think I've kind of stressed myself out. I've gotten a cold. And yeah, Chambi is a little skinny. You might be noticing that. They're not the biggest eaters, but um, since I came back from the trip, I don't know. She just wasn't eating well. I think I'm going to have a fecal done on her just to make sure there's nothing going on other than she's just so dedicated to her job. She's kind of difficult to get to eat. I mix in canned food and that kind of encourages her. You should see the ribs on an Anatolian, but she's too thin. She needs to put on some pounds. And yeah, look at that. Much too thin. I wonder if whatever that is, <laughs> what Chambi saw, actually sounds like a helicopter. Where is it? Oh, there it is. I don't think that's going to get the sheep. <laughs> Chambi's like, what the? But wolves are absolutely not guard animals. I mean, Lauren is like, you handle that. Rather watch from a distance. She took off again. It's something from across that way. Let's go and see if we get closer. That's my neighbor leaving, probably for work. I don't think that's what she saw. I think it might have been one of those dogs, but I think she did her job and she scared them off. I don't know if it's just me. My camera's not focusing well this morning. Meanwhile, Sniper is eating breakfast. I feed them every morning as soon as the sun comes up. But in Emu, the, the female kind of take on a, a more dominant role. And that's kind of how you always see Kabul kind of checking everything out and looking around and Figgle just be like lounging. My babies have finally matured. Can't believe they used to be those little striped looking <laughs> little watermelons. And I'm actually I'm working on two longer videos now. One is a a video that's kind of the the ostrich and emu um, from chicks to their mature size and another one is a kind of completion video I know I mentioned before because I've been working on it for months now of all the different donations that I've gotten and the, the animals enjoying it. I'm probably not going to do any um, inside filming today but Pancake's doing well, and Zodiac the mink, he does seem to have gotten a bit more wild without my constant handling him while I was gone, but maybe it's something I'll be able to work with him on, but he is happy, <laughs> and he's just learning how to swim, which is just adorable. I'll, I'll have a video of that soon. But I'm trying to get and put up plenty of videos of Lauren as a puppy, because, gosh, before we know it, He's going to be adult size with the way he's growing. And you can see his eyes. Let me try to get a better view. His eyes are getting more and more golden. And his uh, black coat is going more gray. And he's got kind of reddish hints on his head and a little bit silver on his tail and there on his shoulder blade. It's really, really pretty. Long, lanky legs and very, very big paws. 
and lots of people I've asked um, where I got them and I've been doing really bad at uh, catching up with questions lately and plus I've been having trouble with my internet service ever I got back from Chicago so it's just like been one thing after another so I'm trying to film and upload and post to Facebook as much as I can but only so much is getting through because my internet keeps going down periodically but I got Lauren from uh, the Georgia Zoo I can hear the Mara over there kind of scratching. I think they want to say hi. They're in a little temporary enclosure on some concrete um, just so they don't dig out while I'm working on something much larger because they definitely need it. Hi. You've gotten so big. This is the female. And no, I have not named either one of them. So I'm very, very much welcome to suggestions at this point. A little bit of nibbling from being bottle raised. Lauren, I don't think they want to play with you. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Here's the male. He's a little bit smaller. And they're just buddies. They do everything together. And you guys have an empty food bowl. I bet that's what you want. Yeah, your pen needs to be cleaned. Hi, baby. Hi. Hi, hi. Let's get you guys some food, huh? Okay, hold on. Mmm, get some fresh strawberries. But they're so cute the way that they lay. They do look like some kind of strange cross between a kangaroo and a rabbit. No, Lauren found something that no one else ever plays with. Of course you like it. What was that? Everything he does is with such intensity. Intensity that I don't think can be met by any dog. It's intense, intense, intense. I also mentioned before, and I keep mentioning, and I really need to do it, but I'm going to be having another contest soon for another little cute little camel, so watch out for that. I'm just kind of trying to think of what I can do for the contest. I have a few ideas, but if you have any suggestions, go ahead and post them. But I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm just kind of like, hmm you know, how to decide a winner, because there's only one little camel and so many people will enter. Was that it? Bored very, very easily. Distracted very, very easily. Kind of just like a super dog. Very food motivated. Um, food aggressive slash protective. A lot of food guarding. A lot of everything guarding. Just resource guarding in general. And here's a donation I just picked up. Thank you, Ronald. Um, Lauren's just gonna help himself. I better get this inside. This is what happens when I let sugar tree out into the big pasture. She just runs and she checks and inspects every little corner of the perimeter of the fence and she has a kind of a system or pattern of doing it. Oh, naughty baby back there. Yeah, they worked on 
knocking the fence down while I was gone and the reason he can reach over there is because the electric wire is not going across the top of the gate. I gotta fix that when I'm done filming. This is a baby in a summer coat. Where is Nessie? Let's go and find her and I think I'm gonna end this video because it is getting later and I still have to take care of the inside animals and then I'm probably gonna go take a nap. There's Nessie. Her summer coat's nice and smooth. Look at baby tripping over the fence line that he broke. It's always a baby too. That's why you're on Bad Dog and Animal Planet, baby. Need to come and do a part two. Okay, so that was just some some quick updates. I am gonna go patch that fence in and then uh, continue on with uh, getting everyone fed and watered this morning. And again, thank you for your support and continuing to watch. And uh, hopefully I'll be back with those uh, two videos I mentioned I'm working on and the uh, wool camel contest. Bye, and I hope you have a fantastic week.